quality out. Click on save. And now you're looking at the state of Baja California. Okay. I'm sorry. So for those that re just review that again. I'm the oldest yeah. one. Okay. So for those that just joined us uh, and we just started a recording, yes. we're talking first about market watch market watch. The idea is, is that it looks at your market. So everybody's market is potentially different. So if you don't want to see all the uh, activity in Latin America, click on the customize button and filter it down to a smaller area. In this example, we're looking at the country of Mexico and the state of Baja California. I'll click on save. And this market watch is now looking at the state of Baja California. If I further want to restrict it or filter it, I can tell it I would like to only look at, for example, Playas de Rosarito. And if I save this, now it's just showing me the market watch of Playas de Rosarito in the last seven days. So 51 new listings came on board in the last seven days. If I want to see those, because I just woke up in the morning, I want to log into the MLS, see what new activity is. Okay, what new listings? I click on that. And in a second, you can see the listings that have come on board. We have a number that came on from uh, Remax. We have Baja Real Estate Group, Century 21. Uh, and others. So these are the properties that have come on board in the last seven days, which is just, it's great. People are starting to use the system. Now, at the same time, if I go back to here, I could look at the sold because there's four properties that sold. So it's interesting. Okay, what sold? So I have some sales here. So it looks like Carol went in and she updated some information and there were sales that occurred on some of their listings. So that's really great. I can drill in, I can click on the link, see the property, all the information about it, okay? So that's market watch. It's important that you utilize that and customize it to fit whatever your market is. Tijuana, Rosarito, Ensenada, Baja California, et cetera, okay? Another thing that I think is real important to show you guys is how to get around quickly. If you look over here on the left, it says my favorite searches. I can click on Rosarito and in one second, I'm looking at the inventory in Rosarito. Now, I set that criteria up. Let's see what I did. I clicked here on criteria to show me all active, closed, expired, pending, withdrawn in the municipality of Playa de Rosarito. There's no price ranges or anything. I could change this and filter this. Let's say I just wanted to show the active properties. And if I get the zoom out of the way, then I can look at the results here. And now these are just active properties in the municipality of Playa de Rosarito. And I can click here on save and I can update this Baja California Rosarito link that I have. Search name, settings, save it. And right here, enable as a favorite search on my home tab. That allows me to come back here. And now when I click on Rosarito, it's a shortcut. It gets me to Rosarito really fast. I just click on it. And now I can see all the active listings in Rosarito, right? So this is how you start to use the MLS quickly. When you want to see information quickly, you go into the MLS. You can sort by price. Uh, whatever else you want. And if you notice, I have fields like listing office name. Let's say that you don't want to see that. You can click here and say remove column. Again, what I'm doing is I'm clicking in the gray area next to the words, and I could say remove column, or I can add columns. I can put all kinds of information. Here I've added the buyer commission split. So I can see on these listings, that most of them are 3%, here's a 2%, here's a 1%, but agents are allowed to put in whatever commissions they so desire, whatever they're offering on the split with that particular listing. Um, now, this listing right here, I just wanna point this out, it's real important. Something doesn't look right with it. List price per square meter is zero, why? This shows that it's a single family residential property, SFR, okay? But it has no bedrooms and it has no size. It has, it's, it's zero size. 
So that's why the list price per square meter is blank because let's see, Carol didn't put in anything. So I can fix this problem even though it's not my listing. How do I do that? Click on the listing and you see this yellow button here, it says report an error. I just click on this button and I say, uh, photo area mapping status, signs duplicate wrong. I'm going to choose other problem and say, this listing doesn't have any square meters. Please contact listing agent to fix. Square meters or bedrooms and bedrooms. Okay. Now I have two choices. I can submit this anonymously if I don't want them to know that it was Ross that submitted it, or I can just click the submit button and it will submit it. I'm just going to click on submit because it doesn't matter to me that it has comes with my name and it tells me your fraction has been sent. So right away, that message just arrived in the support center for Omni MLS and the agents there will be in touch with the listing agent here to help them to identify that this is a mistake, a typo, and they need to fix it. And by fixing it, that'll be good for everybody, right? Okay, now, uh, Mervyn, you were talking about doing a CMA, a comparative market analysis. Yes. So in order to do a CMA, now that we know how to customize our market watch and do a favorite search, let's do a search. You always have to decide of the five different property types, what kind of property are you trying to do a CMA on? Residential sale, residential lease, commercial sale, commercial lease, or land? For this video, let's just do residential sale. And when you're looking at a comparative market analysis, you really wanna choose all of the status types here because you're looking for everything. Now, if you want to put in a close date that you only want to see properties closed in the last 180 days, you can specify that zero to 180. So that's going to give you all closed properties that closed within the last 180 days, or you could put uh, 360, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So these are ways that you're able to filter this information. And I also want to point out something as well. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to clear here and just do a, a search. So I'm looking at closed properties and I'm looking Mexico, Baja California. Now, I only work in Mexico and I only work in Baja California. So why don't I set this as the default? So I can choose active, Mexico, Baja California, because normally when I go in, I'm searching for active properties and I'm going to click on this uh, gear icon right here and choose this first option, set currently selected search criteria as my starting default. What that means is when I go back the next time and I do a search for residential sale, it's already going to default to active properties in Mexico, in Baja California, so I don't have to enter that again. Now, in this case, we're doing a comparative market analysis, so we want to see all the different property types. We see that we have 4,538, but we haven't specified that we want Playas de Rosarito. So we're going to filter it down to Playas de Rosarito, and let's take a look at what kind of results that we have. So we have 618 properties, which is more than what we need. So across the top here, I'm going to go back to my criteria and let's put in the list price. I can enter it in dollars or in pesos. So we'll choose a list price of 150,000 to 250,000. Let's say that's where I think that my customer and their property, you know, it's a good fit. Now, I still have 146 matches. It's probably too many to look at. I could go into that list, but let's further restrict it. Let's say that my customer has a three bedroom property. So now I can put three plus, and that looks for any properties that have three or more bedrooms. And now I can see that I have 64 matches. So now I wanna look at the map. 
So I go into map and I see I have properties here in Rosarito all the way down the coast to El Descanso. But maybe my property is more here in the city and I don't really want to compare it with properties down in Primo Tapia or El Descanso. So now I'm going to choose one of these different drawing tools, either the uh, circle, the square, the multi-point polygon, or the pen. If I choose the pen, that's nice because when I click on it to select it, I can now freehand draw exactly the area that I care about. And I'm just doing this as an example. Obviously, you would be choosing the area that is specific to what you're trying to compare for your customers, okay? And now I'm going to click on this results tab here. In the results, we now have 23 properties. I have a number of active listings, some closed listings, and some canceled listings. So what I want to do is take a look at these. I'm going to sort by price. Um, let's see, size. So I'm trying to study the data to look if there's any that don't match what I'm looking for. Okay. Here's one for 300 square meters. Maybe it's too large. It's too big and compared to my property. So I want to identify that one as a property that I'm going to get rid of. Okay. And maybe also this one for 280 square meters. So I'm going to select all the properties and then deselect the ones that I don't want to include. So I'm going to get rid of this one for 300 square meters. And I'm going to get rid of this one for 280 square meters. Okay. Now it's time to start my CMA. So I simply click on the button down below. Select my contact of who I want to send the, you know, who the report is for, which language I want to generate the report in. I can put a description, uh, CMA for Ross. Okay. And now basically you're just working across the tabs on the top in order to get to the finish section. So I'll go to pages. And in pages, what's important to notice is you can clear these and then save them later once you get the pages that you really like to include in your CMA. So by expanding the cover, I can see that I have a cover sheet. So I double click on it, it jumps over here. That's great, I need to have a cover sheet. I wanna see price adjustments, but there's two. So this one that says USD is the price adjustments in dollars. This one that doesn't is price adjustments in pesos. So as you look at these different options, the ones that don't say USD are in pesos. So if I'm doing a report for uh, an American that speaks English, I would want to simply select all of these reports that are in dollars. And if I don't speak Spanish and I'm always doing reports um, in English, I can choose those and I'm going to set this as my default. Now I want to include all these static pages. So I just double click on static and it moves them over. And if I want to include a map, I can include the map as well. Once you see the list over here, you can move them by changing the order. Just click on the document that you wanna move and either move it up, down, or delete it. Once I have this, I can then click on this option that says set as default. The next time I go to do a CMA, it will use this exact layout. So I don't have to create this every time. Okay, so let's move along. Now we're looking for our subject property. I don't know of a subject property, but I want to include it in my report. So let me see if we can find uh, a listing. So I look at the results and let's say that this property, uh, one of the actives, let's say that this property is the subject property. So I can say fill from selected. It automatically pulled in the photos from that listing, the street information, all of this. So I'm all set on this page here. And then I'll go to the cover page. Uh, that's the subject property. Here's my information. I can put my customer's information here and then go to the next tab. Here's my list of comparables. I have a closed deal, a couple of them that don't have photos. So I probably don't wanna include those. 
So what I'm going to do is select them. The ones that don't have photos, this little box here doesn't have the little icon like a photo. So let's get rid of these ones. And then I choose remove selected. And it questions if I really want to remove them. I said yes. Okay, so now I have the properties that I want to include in my report. I can go to the map and see where they're at in the map. I can go to adjustments. I can then go, I don't see a lot of people doing adjustments. Adjustments is if you happen to personally know the value of a property, like someone did some custom work inside, they put some amazing granite, you know, whatever. You could, or let's say they did an addition. It shows us three bedrooms, but you know there's a really another bedroom. You can add that kind of information on this screen, okay? It's not normal that agents are doing this. It's more of the exception, but it is there if you'd like to do it. Then I go to pricing. This shows me a low, there's a zero. So it means that one of these comps had a price that sounds like it's a little bit messed up. So it's probably an older canceled listing, maybe this one. We'll take a look at that. So the last step is finish and then click view CMA. I always do view CMA rather than email CMA. That way you can take a look at it before you actually send it to your customer. And you can see down below that I have 12 active, two canceled and two closed uh, properties selected for a total of 16 properties. So now I'm going to click on view CMA and it takes about 45 seconds or so for it to generate the CMA. It kind of depends on how many properties you've selected, how many photos are being included, uh, those kind of things. But uh, in a few seconds here, it's it'll generate the CMA for you. The CMA is a PDF document. So that means that you can print it out. You can send it in WhatsApp. Uh, my recommendation is that you have it with you to go on your listing appointment or working with your buyers. Um, it usually is far more effective when you're there in person to go over. If they're someone far, somewhere far away, they're in Dallas or Chicago or something, by all means, generate the CMA and send it to them. Um, I think they'll be thoroughly impressed when they see the CMA that you generate because this is the same tool that agents use in the States. So they'll probably make a comment like, oh my gosh, I had no idea you guys have an MLS in Mexico. So you can see here's my cover letter. Uh, it has my information. It would have the subject property and the information for the customer. And this page is an example of different pages that can be printed. This is, uh, I think, the summary. It was that first option that we chose. And this is just one format. If you don't like this format where it takes the subject property and it's comparing it against two other properties on each page, that way you can your customer, you know, they can look at the pricing, how it's different. It's like a comparison, okay? It's just one of those options. You can choose it in your report or not. Okay, then comes the page minimums and maximums. So you can see the information here, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the half baths, the sizes of these properties, uh, the cost per square meter. And there's a year built zero. That's because a listing agent put the year built as zero. So you can see that this is a problem. And that's why we need to train agents to enter good listing information because if they don't what happens is you know bad data in bad data out so um we could report this issue and try and get the agent to update the information so it's not zero here's listing price sales price and days on market uh, so it gives your a graphical view of that information and here's the active, the canceled, and the closed properties with statistics about uh, sizes of the property, bedrooms, bathrooms, uh, pricing, et cetera. Comparative uh, quick overview summary analysis. And then this is more detail uh, showing you the active properties. They're first. After the active properties come should be the sold, there you go, canceled properties. So now you see information on the canceled properties and then the closed properties, okay? 
This is another format, another page that we selected that's showing me the active property information. The, there was 12 that we selected and highs and lows and all that. Average days on market, the canceled properties and the closed properties. And then here's a summary analysis. This is going to give you on one piece of paper information about your active, your canceled, and your closed. Now, there's something going on here with the closed, those listings that closed. Maybe they're a long time ago. I forgot to update it and say only in the last 180 days. So they could be old closed properties where they didn't have the sales price correctly entered in, something like that. Okay. Pricing recommendation. This is the area where you as the agent, the professional, can specify to your customer what price you think they should list it at or make an offer at. So this is the space where you can include that information. And then these reports are static pages that help you educate your customers about real estate, whether they're making an offer or, or selling. This talks to them about activity versus timing, my guarantee to you as an agent, the guarantee that you would give to your customers, effects of overpricing, the benefits of using a professional realtor, market analysis explanation, importance of pricing again, is just another way of showing uh, information about what happens when a property is overpriced. Same thing here, seller's desired price, buyer's desired price, helping you to be professional and explain these things to your customers, the pitfalls of overpricing. This, this slide, I think, is really good, this page, because it talks about the commissions. Many consumers get confused. They think you're making the full 6% or 7% or 8% or whatever it is that you're charging. But this graph helps you to explain, well, it's half and half. It gets split between the listing agent and the selling agent. Uh, there's a broker typically involved. And then the agent is the one that gets you know, a smaller piece down here. Sources of buyers. Where do leads come from is what that's talking about. Steps to a positive showing. This goes through what the owner of the property can do to help get the property ready to be shown before the showing, during the showing, after the showing. And finally, the map. This shows the properties um, that we selected from the map. So that is a, is a CMA that we just created. It's very easy and fast to do. I kind of uh, took a long time doing it, but you can do it in five minutes or so. The important thing is studying the properties, making sure that you're choosing good comparable properties that fit for what your customer you know, is either buying or selling. Now, again, this is a PDF document, so you could choose to download this document or just save it, right click and save it. And this is going to allow you to send it to your customers via WhatsApp or email it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Mervin, you said to be quick, so I went as fast as I could and that is how you do a CMA. Okay. And I think when we do it in the future, my this is my personal opinion. This is good for us because I haven't a clue. I'm sure Brianna knows more about it than I do. And I, you know, she's probably looked at it twice. I always look at it. So it's, you know, the the level of ability of each each of us. But yeah. that was good for me. But I think for the group, what we need to do is that when we do it on a weekly basis, we we say we're gonna, this is the theme, this is what we're gonna talk about, and we'll do it in Spanish. And if somebody is in English, we do it in English. Or if they want it in English and we do it in Spanish. But I think I think we need to keep it to like 15 minutes is like the the sweet spot for people. It takes five minutes for you to get them to where you want them to, sh to go. Yep. And then five minutes to, sh to show them what you want to teach them. And then okay. five minutes to re-examine what you just taught them and then move on. Because okay. people don't have, they don't have the attention span of more than 15 minutes anyway. Okay. Yeah, that's that's super fast. Um, you know, somehow they have to have a chance to practice and try using it and then they stumble and they don't get it and they forgot something. And just they have to know that we're here for them, that we're available to help people to learn these products. Uh, we have lots of classes online available through the university uh, YouTube website. And um, 
as well as our support center is open, normal business hours, Monday through Friday and half day on Saturday. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a great thing that you're doing, Mervyn, and I'm very excited to be working with you all to help train and educate the group in MP Rosarito. Okay, it's not just me, it's Astaire and Mar. And Brianna is helping me to make sure I stay on track. And then you're guiding us all through this whole, all you know, the, the train wreck of having, now there's another Omni, there's another MLS that was introduced at the meeting. I think Mark can talk to that. And uh, and then at the meeting with the uh, the Sepi BC, uh, yep. that uh, Esther and Mar invited me to go to join them, a six hour marathon meeting, wonderful. I, re I recommend that to everyone. Yes, and, uh, I've sat through many of those meetings. <laughs> yeah, but uh, six hours, that's crazy. Okay, nuts. Okay, but what I did learn from them is that most of the agents, most of the agents have the knowledge they know about Omni, and it looks like they're using Omni, but they really don't, they haven't embraced it fully because they don't understand that this is to make them money. The only reason why we're doing this is so we can make money, so we can move on to the next deal and make even more money. Because Correct. the way we were doing it, we were so slow. You know, it takes us forever and a day to do anything. Now, this helps helps us become more professional and yep. move on to the next deal even quicker. That's my input. Uh, Esther, what do you think? Do you have any questions? Ross. Yes. yes. And I wanted to talk to you about this. We need to have a course to renew our license, okay? So my idea is have the MLS and include the topics that are necessary to bring a property to the MLS, which is legal documentation, statistics, appraised value, uh, fideicomiso areas, it's a lot that we can learn and at the same time include the MLS. We can contact what I say to, if we, if we can put together a summary, we can contact what I say to authorize the summary so, you, so we can get the lights. And I think that would be the only way to work with the MLS because people know about it. Some people do do it, but it's not something for them important. I met Ross about 10 years ago and mm -hmm. I told him it's what we need. Yes or no, Ross? Yeah, for sure. Time, time has passed by and we're still on the same small road. Yeah. So that's an idea that I have. It would push that MLS with all the legalities to get the course for the license. I think that would be a success. Because I, you're talking about the MLS. I know how to work the MLS. Uh, but people, um, they can just download pictures and, uh, and price in it. It's enough. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> I, I agree with you a hundred percent, Esther, um, getting agents to do good listings, doing all the things that you talked about a moment ago is so crucial and important. I was, uh, on the phone with the group in Vallarta. Uh, earlier today and the ampi section for puerto vallarta is very strict so much so that the administrator of the association has to verify every listing that it meets all the requirements of the things exactly that you're talking about esther before it's allowed to be uploaded into the mls now that's yes. pretty extreme but it's super amazing so vallarta when you go in and look at the properties that they have in their MLS. Um, they are all sellable. You know, they're ready to be sold because they only get into that system. And it's the association that's doing it 
they have strict rules that, hey, if you want to upload listings, you've got to play you know, by the rules, which means you've got to have good quality listings that don't have problems on them. If they have problems, that's okay. Go and fix them. And once they're fixed, then bring it back to sell it in the MLS. So something to think about down the road. I have a or question. disclose it. Or disclose it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know because right now we need, we're running out of time, but we need to have to build a good course to bring people to a Rosarito that they got their interested because we have something that the other associations don't have and nobody has this type of product and I think that would be very important for everybody including the MLS with all the regulations as you mentioned not so extreme but create the idea that you're not going to sell any kind of property. It has to be legalized. It has to be sellable. I mean, don't waste your time with this client, please. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. I, I, the, it's there. I, I agree with you. And I think Mar agrees. Everybody, the thing with this is what we need to do we need to show agents that, yeah, by Brian, they have to bring the right documentation. Now that's something that that's, it's obvious, but we, sometimes we kind of cut those corners because we want to get the listing in. And for some reason they don't have the information available, but what I would like to do is show people that not only by using Omni MLS is going to make your life easier, that you, we've actually generated a deal from it or two because of the CRM because of the map, because of whatever the reason, and amplify that and make sure the agents know that, hey, Merv, Esther, Mar, Brianda, we all made money just because we used the MLS from Omni correctly. And I we need to do that because we need to get everybody on board with the Omni MLS in order for us to be able to enforce all the other rules and regulations. Is it serious? Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Mar? Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak in Spanish. Is that okay for oh, you, Rod? Yes. Sí, sí, sí. Okay. Ross, ahorita uh, quiero bueno, la primera pregunta. Eh, ¿Cuánto el digo el beneficio de ser un miembro Ampi? Y ya ves que eh, se supone que Ovni está con Ampi. Um, ¿Cuál es el, el, ¿Cuál es el costo? Porque se supone que eran 15 dólares. Eh, yo estoy pagando 25 dólares y centavos cada mes. Entonces, ahorita, eh, bueno, el, el día de ayer me preguntó eh, Bustamante Business Center eh, cuánto era lo que se pagaba siendo miembro de AMPI. Ellos ahorita pues continúan con nosotros y quieren entrar a OVNI MLS. Eh, en la toma de protesta en México, ah, resulta ser que van a firmar una alianza, me parece que ah, el 19 de febrero, por lo que no tengo todavía mucha información, con eh, Flex MLS. Entonces, nosotros en Rosarito ya estamos encaminados con ustedes, con OVNI MLS. Eh, a mí sí me gustaría, y la verdad es que estamos impulsando el entrar todos a un, a un MLS para poder compartir nuestras propiedades y moverlas. Entonces, si ya estamos encaminados contigo, Ross, eh, sí me gustaría saber el beneficio que tienen nuestros miembros estando entrando con OVNI MLS. Creo que habías comentado que había un porcentaje que se iba a Ampi Rosarito. Eh, yo quiero saber si, si así se ha estado haciendo, eh, cómo le han, eh, si ya le hicieron transferencia a Ampi Rosarito, o sea, de los miembros que ya entramos a, a OVNI MLS. Eh, me gustaría tener información eh, real 
de lo que realmente es el costo para quienes están preguntando y que si realmente eh, le están aportando a Ampi Rosarito. Para nosotros es súper importante el que si esto está sucediendo,